a video tutorial with Sponge Buckle. How to actually turn this into a sort of painting very quickly using the art history brush. Well, first thing to do, just go and quickly create some snapshots to work from. So I've got over here, history panel, and I'm just going to quickly go up to here, new snapshot. So I'm just going to save that. Also going to apply a couple of filters. So I'm just going to go say filter and blur Gaussian blur. And so you blur that. And again, create a snapshot there. Click OK. Go back and then maybe I'm just going to go for quite a nice one, camera raw filter. I'm just going to go for a dark. Just change exposure, change contrast, highlights, shadows. Click OK. And I'm going to go with that. That's it. Of course, I could. I could create loads and loads of snapshots. You could create, say, 10 snapshots and maybe decide to use bits of from each of them. Click OK. And, and now, also I don't want that one, so I'm just going to go back to the snapshot there. OK. Next thing to do is create a layer. So I'm just going to go to a layer, new layer, because I want to actually apply it on a layer. I don't want to apply it on the actual image itself. So. Click OK there. So I've got a new layer, you can see over here, the layer. And I'm now going to use the art history tool. So just go over here to, now it might be in different position depending on your uh, customization. So just select the art history brush tool. Going to have size six, going to go for tight short there, zero and zero. The brush I'm going to be using is this, it's just a 400 by 400, obviously reduced down to six, but just created it at that and use the edit and define brush preset. OK, just go back there now on that layer. And I don't actually want to really see it. I can just make it black. So I'm just going to go edit and fill and black. But of course, now you can't see it at all. And you want to obviously paint over. You want to see what you actually. So I'm just going to just make it past a little bit so I can see it. I'll put it, change it later. But so what you can do then, just quickly add. Now you'll see straight away. I'm actually getting the colours from the image. There's the white cloud, there's the grey building, so and then the blue down there. You see the blue, and you can see the green obviously of that branches there. Okay, how? How do you do that? Just go over to the brush and I'm using shape dynamics, I've got various settings here, size just don't have to worry about that. I could have it there. Yeah. Colour dynamics is the key one. Now I've got the huge jitter down, saturation down, brightness down. And purity. Purity is the key one here, set to 0%. Right. So if I actually said it that way, it would just it wouldn't look the same. It would go more colourful that way. So I'm just going to go for zero and then just paint, just paint over there. Now you could of course vary the size. You don't have to go with six. You could go with say 12, 15, and again you can and I'm just doing that, but you could say decide to go to this snapshot here. Or this snap, that was that one there. So I'm just going to go, don't want that to do that. I'll just go back to that one and snapshot there. That's the snapshot I want to use. Sometimes that's one thing to avoid. Just don't click the wrong section. What you want to click is along there, and you want to actually don't want to click the snapshot itself, otherwise, you just go back to the blur. So just click on that, just that column there. And then once you've got that, then you're actually using the source is the in this case, obviously, the blurred image is there. And you might, obviously, it, it creates a more inter different interest in, in different areas. You might want to have it more detailed in particular areas. And also, of course, you've got this one, which is a sort of more, that will create a slightly darker thing. So you can just vary, add, there. and again, you've got the cloud there. But I'm just going to go back to that one first. And again, like I say, you can vary the size, so you don't have to Keep it there. You can make it, you can see the star there now. It's 30. And then just apply that rapidly over there. You can see it takes the colour, sort of smudges it there, and then colour there. And just apply that rapidly over all the buildings. Uh, just going to do it very, very quickly. Obviously, you can obviously you can take hours doing it if you wish, or a few seconds just to quickly, rapidly just go over. Now, I'm doing it on a layer, so you can actually. What you can do, you can just go and say, create another layer. So layer, 
new layer, click OK. And the reason for layers is then you can add effects, maybe add sort of layer effects, bevels, and that sort of thing. So, and also note that if you apply it on a layer, you can then, if you don't like that layer, you can just remove it and just quickly start again instead of having to create the whole thing over and over and over again. So you've got a new layer there and then set the size. Okay, just put it down, maybe 14, and just add over there. And you can see you can build up very rapidly this image as a sort of, you can just see the structure of the image very quickly taking shape. Again, the clouds there. And you can do one part of the sky and leave all the rest completely untouched if you wish. And then once you've actually done that, what you can do, you can just go over here and you go to the layers and just go to that one and set that back to there. And you've got the image there. You don't obviously go. And of course, you can always, of course, blend the background and so on if you wish. Hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.